here we go. Are we ready to start? Yep. Okay. 7.30, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, the, uh, this meeting of the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department Board of Commissioners is being videotaped at the RMLD's offices at 230 Ash Street, Reading. The meeting is um, being videotaped for distribution to the community TV stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. Uh, I will read the uh, co code of conduct, although I think we uh, don't have too many uh, troublemakers in the room. We have uh, <laughs> no guests. We have, we have, sorry, we have a member of the select board here, Vanessa Alvarado. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, thank you for coming tonight. Mm -hmm. um, um, the RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair and on items on the official agenda, as well as those not on the official agenda. We ask that all uh, questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board in responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. Um, and Dave Hennessy who is the chair. He's not here tonight. Uh, so I am Dave Talbot and I am vice chair and sitting in his chair today. And Dennis Kelly is here from the cab. Hello, Dennis, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, so now with that, uh, are we on public comment or are we, yes. um, is there any uh, public comment, uh, no, uh, citizen advisory board report or none? Um, we, we really didn't meet much this summer. Uh, last night was our first meeting. We did a reorg, um, and you know, we talked about the upcoming budget and that was about it. You know, right. what night we're going to meet and, uh, so it's, it's pretty uneventful. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, I guess um, Ms. Alvarado is the, is the liaison. If there is an item on the agenda. If you have any, any uh, public comment that you'd like to make as liaison, and there's no obligation, but it's not there on the agenda, so I just thought I'd give you the opportunity. Uh, thank you, but nothing is there. Okay. And that will do it for public comment, given that there are no additional members of the public in the room. Um, okay, so that moves us on to the approval of the board minutes. Um, and could I have a... Uh, yeah, I'll move that the board... Approve the meeting minutes of June 21st, 2018 and July 19th, 2018 on the recommendation of the general manager. Okay. July and July. Yeah, it's crossed out, I think. Crossed the, out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was the secretary that new, uh, Who was the secretary that night? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, did we have a second or not? Second. Okay. Uh, yeah, the motion to remove the July. Okay, uh, good, so as, uh, okay, fine. And adding that, do we have uh, a vote? Yes, all in favor? All right. That's four, and all, all opposed, that's 4-0 with uh, Dave absent. Um, and now we move to the general manager. Sorry, I'm supposed to give a report here according to this agenda that, uh, sorry, Dennis, you already gave your report. Okay. Nothing more to say. It's there's listed here that this is, I'm supposed to report on a subcommittee of the yeah, payment. Mr. Chairman, you want me to talk yes, about that? Please do. Uh, just okay. to explain the agenda item. Uh, so this is the uh, subcommittee that's still alive on the payment to the town of, of Reading. Uh, that committee, uh, we really need to schedule another meeting of that mm -hmm. committee because uh, I really would like to make a presentation to November town meeting and have this thing wrapped up once and for all. Um, I have some ideas that I'm going to share right now with some of you at this point. Um, the study that we had indicates that we've got a problem in terms of raising enough capital going forward at this point. One of the things that I have thought about, and again we'll discuss it more in depth in the committee, is actually freezing the payment to the town for the next two to three years, and after that potentially going to something based upon kilowatt hours at that point. Now that kilowatt hours, if, if they go down, there may be less to the town and we may have to consider at that point maybe some sort of phase in at that point but it is uh, something that I've thought about I just don't think we can just cut the town payment today but we you know we consider really freezing to for maybe two in the next two or three years and and you know going and try to get something more aligned with the kilowatt hours at this point so that's kind of some of my thoughts at this point mm -hmm. and again you know I'd like to Tracy if you can maybe get it contact everybody and let's get the committee started you know, I mean, Mr. Enzinger, and, and um, you're on the committee, too. Vanessa's on the committee, too. Yeah. Go ahead. Has the report been released? I know it was discussed some months ago. Uh, do you want to actually step up so that we can hear you? Yeah. Yeah. Not to put you on the spot, but nobody yeah. can hear from the, from the <coughs> table. Actually, we there. require everybody to do that, so yeah. that's yeah. a okay. good thing. 
So just to recognize uh, Vanessa Alvarado, member of the select board. Thank you. Um, has the report on the financial long-term outlook for RMLD been completed? I believe so. Is it not? Well, you wrote your report on the, the payment issue. I don't know if you want to address that question. Has, are you, you're asking for a longer-term financial? My understanding from several months ago was that um, there was going to be some effort made to look into the broader financial health of RMLD um, and not necessarily specific to the payment. Um, and there was some discussion that that would take about six months. That was a few months back. Well, that, I think that what, okay, we'll go back a little bit. That changed a little bit. I think there was some discussion about uh, utilizing an outside agency to do a study that was going to take mm -hmm. about six months. Yep. Okay. And okay. then I had gotten directive that they, we didn't want to spend the money on that. Okay. So I, being qualified to do the study, did one on financial outlook, uh, capital projects, and, and did a, a projection and provided my board with a study. Okay. And everyone is in receipt of that study. Yes, and sir. that yeah. Yeah, and, and when you convene this meeting, I think that study should be discussed and right. Well, so I think also on the same page as what if, you know. The, if the select board doesn't have it, I think we should release it to them right. forthwith. Should, no reason not to release it, is there? It should be released forthwith at this point if you don't have it from what you're saying. If I, if I overlooked it, if it was in fact communicated to me, I apologize. But I, I will review it in advance okay. if that's something. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I guess. <clears throat> Well, I, I look, I, I, I recognize you. I'm sorry. It's fine. Uh, right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Force of habit. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> As you were. All chairs. Uh, so uh, I, I have the same recollection as Colleen. I think the only pause I would say is Colleen uh, provided, uh, and, and some of that was also because uh, I think we should uh, recognize your involvement. The cab had also expressed a similar. Uh, recommendation, I think, around not uh, spending money that might otherwise really be put to better use because basically Colleen has all the uh, information to be able to provide the projections. The only thing I would say about releasing it forthwith is I don't, that was sort of right before we kind of got into summertime or in summertime, so I don't think uh, as commissioners we've actually uh, provided Colleen with any feedback so I what we what I wouldn't want to do is present it as a report that has received you know vetting because we, we don't want you to spend time re reading something and then have additions you know 6b revised so uh, I don't know about so to me it sounds like we, we should and I think that I thought that was the next step in the process that uh, this board would go through and make sure uh, it had the benefit of the board review and any inputs. Uh, not that anything's going to change. I think that's a great from suggestion. From an accuracy okay. point of view, right. make sure it's okay. as robust as it should be, not missing yeah. anything. Okay. That, that's uh, fine, but we should do something on that you yeah, know, so now at this point. My you know. suggestion would be the report that Colleen wrote, as far as I'm concerned, is a matter of public record. Right. Uh, it can be given out to anybody who wants it. If it wasn't already, I think it might have already been out there. And that I would suggest that we, as a formal matter, put it on our agenda uh, as needed for next month. and there's a need to vote on it as our can I make a comment yeah, please yeah. okay so that that study was done uh, and given to my board right um, and if it's public record that's fine I just don't want it to go out there as if it is the proposal from the board back to yeah. the town it's fine because yeah. it's not it's only my recommendation as the general right. manager to the Board of Commissioners I'm not so sure it's public record I just either. don't I, I, I don't think record. it's been vetted it by record by the Board of Commissioners yet in order, well, it's not well, a proposal. Let me, let me make a recommendation then, we just stamp it draft. Yeah, what's that? We stamp it draft, draft, yeah, D-R-A-F-T. I, I, you know, I just don't, right. uh, just from a value added point of view, I, I, to Colleen's point, I, I think we want to make progress in this and we just don't want people right. uh, reading things that may not be correct or up to date, in which mm -hmm. case, uh, right. you know, well, I have no objection to releasing it you know, as far as... I think it's already been, well, just to clear, uh, to John's point, I think anybody could have this report with stamp as draft. We could have it be on the agenda at our next meeting, and anybody who wants to discuss it and discuss the matter can do that. That would be my suggestion as a process. Okay. All right, as far as the report. Um, I think what Colleen did was save uh, ratepayers' money by doing something from her expertise mm -hmm. and knowledge 
rather than hiring you know, a consultancy to do it. Um, I would just take a step back to anybody who's watching this discussion that, to my recollection, um, our MLD pays one of the largest amounts of any municipal utility to its, um, to its towns. That's number one. And number two, a payment from, from the utility to the town entity is it's, it's coming from ratepayers. So at a certain point when you keep raising it, you're just raising electric rates and that has other knock-on effects. You know, it's still coming out of people's pockets and to the extent it, it helps raise rates and it reduces the competitive position of any you know, business that might want to move to Reading, you start to sort of, you know, it's, a, it's not necessarily helping in the larger picture. And number three, where I would like to get us to as an organization is that there's, there's assistance between utility and municipal, uh, you know, this cooperation where there can be efficiencies found um, that, that has the same effect as just writing a check, where we're finding ways to provide or save money mutually between the town entity and the utility. What that could look like could be something that we could start, you know, embarking on now that we have attendance um, from select board members on a regular basis it's a conversation that we can integrate into our our monthly meetings we could perhaps have it be mm -hmm. an agenda item um, where it's a ongoing discussions how can we look for this kind of opportunity I have some ideas this isn't the time or place to do it um, but nevertheless as a concept I think that's what we would try to do is have the town and the utility working together more closely where we can where it's feasible within our different um, roles and and not have it just be a discussion about how big is the check. If, if I could add to yeah. that just, just a little bit, I mean, <clears throat> part of the reason uh, was because we have alternate uses for the money, right? I mean, it was really investment in capital for the next few years uh, to make up for the fact that we didn't invest uh, for many years prior to the, basically the general yeah. manager coming on. And so it, it's really to increase and maintain the reliability of the system. I mean, it's not as, as if we're trying to just lower the entire rates overall. We'd love to do that, uh, but it's got another purpose, and that's really what we're, we're really focused on. So the delay for a couple of years, I mean, we'll, we'll certainly talk about that and, right. and how right. to uh, right. see what that makes sense and factor in, of course, if there's a reduction in kilowatt hours that's being used for whatever reason by people, by businesses, et cetera. Um, but there's alternate uses uh, for the capital, including the substation, that we're uh, you know talking about building, right for uh, Wilmington, uh, which is um, ha has to be done. I mean, it's not it's not it's, it's, it's not a question of necessity. It's it's something we absolutely have to do. Uh, so when we factor in all those different things, which we'll uh, do during the committee, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we'll come to some right. you know, reasonable so, conclusion. So just just to follow up on that, you know, the freezing is my idea. It's not anybody else's idea in this room. It's my idea at this point. I want to make everybody clear on that. Uh, but I do think that, you know, by the, the November town meeting, we need to have, we sh should get this resolved and put this, put this issue to bed. That's my feeling. And I think, you know, it's, you know, to say in the next meeting, we may have to have a meeting before then, um, if, you know, the subcommittee, you know, don't send the subcommittee off without any direction from this board, you know? I, I don't want that, you know? So we may have to have a meeting sooner than, than sure. next month. Um, well, okay. Yeah. Tracy, isn't that all? If I may. Yeah. Um, so two points. Um, one, in regards to the report, um, if it hasn't been made publicly available, perhaps it could be made available to um, myself and Dan Ensminger, the other right. mm -hmm. liaison to RMLD, for our review with the understanding that it is still in draft form. The board may have additional changes, but it will help inform our knowledge yeah. when, before, we, before we meet as a subcommittee. Um, and then um, to um, – Mr. Talbot's point regarding collaborating with the town, I as one member of the select board would very much look forward to seeing how we can partner with RMLD um, on initiatives that would be beneficial to both the town and RMLD. Um, and perhaps as the payment discussion winds down towards um, approaching town meeting, we can reform a subcommittee to discuss those kinds of endeavors. Mr. Chair. The only uh I think I did. I don't disagree with any of that. Uh, I think not during this meeting necessarily, but I think we should set some particular, I mean, the, the town meeting, I don't know if the dates have been set, but it's, it's probably in six weeks, which is not a lot of time since mm -hmm. we know how hard it is to get everybody's schedules, both here and on the other side. 
organized. So I would recommend, uh, and I also fully agree with uh, what Phil said, we should, you know, we don't want this like a ping pong ball where we mm -hmm. send it over and then, you know, the, the committee, subcommittee comes up with a recommendation and CAB and the, and the full board <laughs> has problems. So let's, let's try to schedule the right sequence of meetings that have to happen. Let's right. start with the end in mind. We've got to present because, you know, we don't want to give, uh, give the chair who's ever presenting the, the night before the, 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 the meeting. Uh, 11th hour discussion and, and, and the cab obviously needs to be involved and informed so I, I think we just need to put some milestone yeah. meeting dates uh, okay. and we had already discussed I know having uh, a board meeting I don't know if we have a memorialized it to, to an actual date but I, I think we just need to get those dates mm -hmm. hard -wired. yeah I agree so, yep well um, do you want to do it now do you want to wait till the end of the meeting or well, I think, you know, I think the first thing to be said of is probably the, the subcommittee. I think that's, that's the first domino that's got to fall, the sub, you know, getting the subcommittee together. Yeah, and, and it's still active, so why don't we have this be the meeting where we wrap it up? And, and, you know, in my opinion, committees aren't always the way to do things, so we should just do them with full boards as a matter of philosophy. So, I mean... So what are you saying? I'm saying have one more and wrap it up, and then it's up to the boards to move any th whatever it is forward. Right, but what are we moving forward, though? This board's got to tell me what, what we're going to move forward. Well, the results of the subcommittee, I think, is what... Right. Uh, we want to hear from the subcommittee, which has existed for some time, have it bring forward whatever it's going to bring forward. That's the... It okay. exists. Okay. So okay. I think it's fair. Let's get it okay. done, and then we'll... So we'll, why don't we work with die. Tracy, the members of yeah. the, subcommittee, the subcommittee, work yeah. with Tracy to find a day soon that we could reconstitute the like in the next two weeks if yeah, we can do right, it exactly <laughs> right yeah. and, and mm -hmm. try to put this to right. bed and then it's you know because when there's a subcommittee then the full board isn't necessarily as engaged on it as, as it should be and I think if we had just had it be the full boards uh, you know this would have been not a blast as long as it has yeah, but, but I, but again just so we don't waste yeah. effort I, I think Phil makes a, a, an important point so we don't want to have the subcommittee discuss it, talk about Phil's ideas, and then it comes back here, and, you know, there's a 180-degree yeah. right. yeah. difference. So exactly. it seems to me this board should provide some direction to Phil to bring this up committee, especially where it's been so long, uh, and, and I'd highly recommend it, uh, not as a, a repeat of everything, but we need a very short summary of where we are, because I know, Vanessa, I, I knew you were part of the stuff, but if I w was... You know, in the, in the audience or someone else, I think people need to understand, you know, what we're talking about in terms of why why this is an issue, what we've done. It doesn't have to be a two-hour discussion. But. Okay. And, and that's one one thing I think the subcommittee could do is is uh, settle on some alternatives, present them to the full board, and let the board vote on the alternative yeah, that is a, that. they feel yeah. appropriate. Okay. Yeah. We could have two or three. Right. One is freezing it. One is potentially reducing it third one could be increasing it who knows I mean you know it, it's uh let's we need to I think kick it around in the subcommittee first okay. and then bring whatever proposals right. but again the, the whole point is let's get get moving on this yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's get moving that's well, why I brought this it was up. summertime mm -hmm. right so a rather <laughs> throw out my idea yeah, exactly okay so a rather yeah. innocuous report of the subcommittee <laughs> item on the agenda has become a very complicated well, one. I knew it would be. Yes, yeah, so I knew it would be. So at this point, uh, <laughs> are we having, we're scheduling a subcommittee meeting, correct? And the subcommittee correct. will yes. bring forth yes. a range of options and then the right. full board will consider them and take some kind of action incorporating your report, the subcommittee's so input, the and hopefully the idea that it's more than just what's this dollar figure, but mm -hmm. um, other means of, of okay. enhancing That's that right. relationship it, and value. So just, just a reminder, the subcommittee is myself, Mr. Stempeck, it's uh, Mr. Enzinger, and Vanessa, and then uh, Mr. Ho Mr. Hooper, George. Okay. Okay. Just right. remember so, the five members. Um, okay. Good. I think um, Mr. Cohen is also on there. Neil Cohen, the Reading representative. He's also on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank, Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we're on to the uh, general manager's report. Sorry? I need to find the tissue. Okay. I will fill the empty space with a little more discussion on collaboration. 
um, if I may. Um, we were discussing um, planning, site planning issues where when new developments are proposed, there can be automatic uh, placement of car charging stations as a matter of a routine. That would, that would enhance, I think, local infrastructure, the c consumption of electricity, uh, advance cleaner transportation, and provide more revenue to RMLD, which then helps so the larger cause. Just to expand on that, I know, on, I, I've, I've thought about our idea of the car charging station. There is now, I live in the, in the area of the, the Reading Depot. Yeah. There is now a lot of development that's going on in that Correct. area. Mm -hmm. I, I still think the idea of potentially putting some sort of charging station down in the depot area. Completely agree. Because it's very much residential now. There, there's at least two new buildings that I'm aware of that are, that are going right. up in that area. So, yeah, so. And I think it'd be a, a so you both know. both within and town the town property. And there's town owned land down there too, so. Right. I so think it'd be an excellent idea. Within town owned land, if the town is ever redeveloping a uh, street, a parking lot, that this is something that should be thought about and made incorporated into whatever the relevant ordinances are or planning, site planning, review processes, and with new developments. And then, you know, right now, as an electric car owner, we've got one here uh, in the RMLD parking lot, and I think that's it. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. We don't have any other public car charging in the town of Reading at the moment. So yet we have all this activity going on. So right there is something we can do today to move forward with something in our mutual interests, enhance infrastructure, en enhance clean transportation, and enhance revenue to RMLD in the form of increased sales yeah. from the chargers. So right. you know, that's the kind of thing that's one of what could be many. And um, we, have another, uh, we have another comment from Ms. Alvarado on this point. <laughs> so. Well, well, it's fine. It's fine. Why, I mean, why she's on the way up? I, I, I mean, the, 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 to, but to move something like this forward, yeah. when we had a year or a year and a half of, of running around in circles on this payment question, we could be moving six things like this forward, and that's where I'd like us to get to. Hey, if I can make a comment as well, and yeah. I'm hoping that when we consider locations, you know, it's not just about Reading. I mean, we've got two well, major yeah, interstates that crisscross right. through Reading, absolutely. much to my chagrin because it's noisy, right? right. <laughs> uh, but 95 and 93 for easy on, easy off access and having it, the positions of them available to everybody in the United States on the, whatever database right. they're using. Because Tesla does this all the time, uh, right? They have Tesla stations identified. But so it's not just dependent upon people in Reading buying electric cars. Anybody on these interstates who want to charge up right. could pull off easy, get back on easy, just like a regular gas <coughs> station. Causeway Street. Okay. Causeway Street. <laughs> um, <laughs> just a thought. You know, recognizing again Ms. Alvarado. Who yeah, has, right. Two comments. Um, one, perhaps, in a, if I might suggest, perhaps in a location where there's a restaurant or shopping to be had. So Absolutely. So people have something right. to do while they right. charge. Um, and the second is CPDC is now uh, in the process of reviewing their guidelines for developments. This is specifically targeted towards the 40R district, uh, which focuses on downtown. Um, so as they're undergoing that process now, um, Perhaps it might be a good time for RMLD to collaborate, work, sure. reach out to CPDC, uh, and see if that's something that they can. And when is the next meeting? Is it June. Tuesdays? Yeah. Actually, I forwarded the flyer for October 17th, which the town is discussing parking lots, right. yep. uh, and also economic development, of which we will go and we will listen. Yep. Uh, and then I've also reached out to the town manager to uh, have a conversation with him. Sub, you know to discuss um, the possibility of putting in charging stations in public parking lots and even some uh, potential language that would go into planning board language right. where maybe, few, and this would be all four yep. towns, you know, future buildings are, are built maybe with the ability to encompass solar on the roof in the future and that any, you know, commercial buildings right. would, would maybe have a charger. And that, that would go into planning board thing. But Bob and I are going to meet towards the end of October after this October 17th um, meeting on economic development. So, but I sent everyone the flyer. Yep. Everybody's welcome to go. Yep. I should have mentioned that earlier. That Thank you, Colleen. That's yep. that's great. Um, so when is, is it Tuesday, I think, the CPDC Tuesday. meeting? Uh, they just had one this week. Um, I'll check, but so I'd, I'd are they bringing an article forward for a town meeting to revise the 40R? Uh, because it's not... Um, it wouldn't affect the bylaws, no. Okay. Um, and they're 
their guidelines. Got it. Um, but it, they are talking about parking and usage, um, effect so. on surrounding neighborhoods. Yep. A lot of it is visual. Yep. Um, but this might be a nice area to start incorporating that concept. Great. Vanessa, if I could ask just a, a unrelated question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're attending our meeting here, which is great. I mean, it really, I think, helps get the selectmen and us more on the same kind of page. Uh, are, would you recommend that we attend certain meetings of the selectmen in a reporting capacity to just, or just a discussion capacity? Uh, because it's, I know it's been kind of one-sided right now. You've come to, to us. Um, I, I'm just asking the question. I don't know. There's you know, sitting through all of your meeting probably isn't obviously as, as productive, just like you're sitting here through all of ours isn't. So, and everybody's got the chance to get up and leave. But if there are specific maybe you know, pieces once a month or something where we could report back to the overall selectmen that these are the things that we're working on. You may or may not have seen it, and just maybe a 10-minute, five-minute slot for one of us to chat okay. to those. I think that's a great idea. I could present it to the select board chair. Um, I know that he is making efforts to bring in various boards and committees um, for just that reason, because it gives a broader audience of, right. of what's happening. Um, I have been providing, um, when I attend these meetings, updates during the liaison assignments. I actually just um, announced the uh, RMLD plug and drive event that you had this weekend. Um, but it would be great, I think, to hear from the commissioners. Okay, great. So I'll present that to our chair. That's enough. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Let's move on. Yep. Okay, thank you. So now we can move to um, your report, Colleen, on the first item, review of the general manager. I guess this is just the action item. This is not a report from you, or is it a report from you? Wasn't well, there a committee that well, worked on this? Want me to read this? Yeah, why don't you go ahead. Sure, we're just going to go right to the motion. Yeah. Right, go right to the motion. Okay. Uh, move that the board approve the general manager committee's recommendation that effective July 1st, 2018, Ms. O'Brien receive a salary increase of 4.5% in addition to a $6,000 bonus paid out as Ms. O'Brien chooses as ICMA, cash, or a combination of the two. I'll second that. Any discussion? Do you want to discuss the evaluation process at all, John, or just summarize? Uh, oh, I, it's very similar to the way we've done it in years past, where we uh, we use uh, comparables from uh, similarly sized uh, organizations, look at their growth posture, look at the benefit structures that uh, other general managers have have uh, have seen, and then balance that with uh, the report back uh, from Ms. O'Brien in terms of what her accomplishments were for the year, and I think those were very favorably yep. received. There have been significant number, far too many for us to elaborate here, uh, but obviously going on the right track in terms of making this a very modern, forward-looking organization. Uh, so I think the entire board was very impressed with that, and hence the recommendation. Yeah, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind, Colleen, if you want to just summarize, uh, take this opportunity to summarize some of your achievements. Um, you don't have to, but it's it was a very, <laughs> it was a great year, and you did a wonderful job, and and we all thank you, and I think you've done a great job for the community. So if there, you know, you don't have to take this chance to toot your horn, but there were a lot of great achievements at RMLD this year. Um, so. well, I appreciate. Um, obviously, we we accomplished a lot. Yep. Uh, the entire organization, and as John said, we we are very forward looking now. Uh, Utility technology is changing, the environment's changing, the landscape of utility going forward is changing, and we're on the right track. And we're back to being a leader, uh, and you know, we, we want to be a spokesperson for moving forward for all the municipals in the state, uh, because we are the big sister and the big brother, and that is important. Um, too many accomplishments, lots of money saved, um, yep. and uh, you know, I just, enjoy being a public servant and we'll continue to give you 150 percent okay great yeah, thank I, you I would uh, just like to say I mean the, the process as John said also includes uh, each board member provides a very detailed uh, performance review in about seven categories including the financial area and we had as I think we reported last meeting there was no audit findings we have safety uh, pieces organizational a study that was brought in a few years ago and uh, being in the HR world uh, Colleen has done a great job with 
uh, managing uh, succession planning, employee development here, training plans, uh, which is very difficult, and as I like to say, still run the railroad. So uh, fabulous, uh, having been on the board a few years, uh, uh, th this is a, was a tremendous performance year, and I think uh, uh, this is reflected in, in her performance review. Yeah. And I kind of feel the same way. I think everybody's kind of said everything, and yep. I think you know, Colleen, you you know, you've done a great job over the last year, bringing you know, getting the department to where it is today, and you know, not to, but you got to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm with that. <laughs> the, 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 people probably have noticed a lot of peak, um, you know, sort of alerts to try to get people to conserve energy. This is just one of the many efforts at RMLD to communicate the need to, to reduce energy consumption at peak times in the hot summer days. And I'm wondering, do we know what we what we knocked down on the 29th of August, which I believe was the peak? Do we know how much we... Um, we have, we're still analyzing Okay. That. So, but I think you have now four megawatts of demand reduction on the industrial side, and there's a major effort. We have a, a, a generator that's knocking back the peak and a battery, uh, I think a state leading battery project that's in right. development that we've received a grant for. When that goes in, it means we're going to have another, is that two, five, five megawatts right. of, this is a giant lithium ion battery that will right. take energy during uh, whatever the cheapest time is overnight and release it during the peak. This is a, um, you know, an effort to both save costs and also make the electricity supply more sustainable in the sense that we're, we're leveling out consumption over the course of the day. When you do that, it means you have less reliance on these very, uh, very polluting oil and uh, certain kinds of gas peaking plants that only kick on on those hot afternoons a uh, few times a year. The less we use those, the, the more we're helping on the emissions front and we're helping on our costs. So these are big deals that we're doing and they're, they're hard to see. So uh, it's worth mentioning, you know, these are some great engineering feats within RMLD that I just want to personally call out. So thank you, Colleen, for all of this. You're a great engineer, and thank you. Yep. Um, thank you, Colleen. The, um, and the, this just segues also, I just wanted to make a, a comment on the next. Um, did we vote on We, we don't have to vote, vote on, on, yes, vote on, on that. that. So yeah. uh, with that, <laughs> let's vote. Uh, we have a motion and a second. And uh, all in favor? Uh, we have yeah. four to zero with Dave uh, voting in, in spirit. But we have to <laughs> technically say he's absent. Um, I just want to make a quick comment about the next item. So one of the things Colleen's been doing is uh, very assiduously going through our policies and updating them and having a legal review. This particular one is one that is of extremely high importance for RMLD in that it sets out what are our goals for whatever you want to call it, sustainable energy, renewable energy, having a sort of a cleaner operation. Um, it's, so, it's, it's of a different kind of magnitude of a policy. And we've had a, one quick round with this. And we had, we've had some discussion on it. And I think that we probably would, I would like to just sort of hold off on voting on this version for a couple of reasons. Um, I think that it's called a sustainable energy policy, but I think if I'm not mistaken, it's really about procurement of energy, right? This particular scope of this policy is about what kind of energy are we buying, correct? It's not, that's what it's about. That's what it covers. The policy was put into place yep. to say that, and, and I clarified it. Yep. Um, it, it directs the general manager to procure sustainable energy that can be made from renewable whether you retire or sell the RECs. Correct. So, but it only covers procurement, correct? Like it's about what, what we're buying. It's not about other types of operational. It's about what's in your portfolio. It's an energy portfolio. Okay. You so know. where I'm going with this, uh, just, just to finish my little spiel here, is that First of all, it's, it's more of an energy procurement policy, and um, we should be clearer about what these different buckets are. Colleen just alluded to the things for which we sell these renewable ed energy credits or what we don't. Um, we're hearing that, in fact, because we sell them, we actually have a zero renewable energy from a technical point of view, from what it's, how it's defined by the state. We have zero. But we are saying we have 17% that's sustainable. I just think some of these things need to be explained and unpacked what they mean. What do these terms actually mean in a, in a clearer way within the text here? Now that's the kind of the negative comment from me. The positive comment is that if we're going to have a sustainable a sustainability policy, we should be crediting properly talking about some of the great things we are doing like the battery and the generation and other things that we're doing that aren't about energy procurement. 
that speak to how what our goals are to be a more sustainable operation. And that would, that would point to, hey, well, we've achieved a battery, we've achieved a generator, and those wouldn't show up in this policy because it's only about what energy you're buying. So I think we probably need two policies. One is the energy procurement, and within that we want to be clear about, well, because we have a REC policy, we actually can only say we, we don't have any renewable energy in our portfolio, but we do cite a lot of renewable energy and then sell the renew renewable energy credits. So these are complicated things. But I think as a board, we need to be very clear about what we're doing here. There's stuff that's cited, but we sell the recs. That's great. But we can't. then there's stuff that's uh, maybe it's, we can still call it renewable because we don't sell the recs. But this word sustainable is murky because it's, it's, a, way to, it's, way, it's a way to say that we don't have, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm uh, Mr. Chairman, if I, yeah. if I could, I'd, yeah. I'd like to recommend that we would uh, table this. Yep. Uh, motion until we've had a, a chance to discuss it in more detail yeah. in terms of what the board would would like to see from a definitional point of view and I think that's really what it's all about it's not yep. not the intent to uh, to change it but to, to make sure that it's clarified in a way that the public understands and we understand so that we don't get into rec versus non rec exactly. versus renewable versus sustainable issues when we predefine exactly what do we mean and that's really, um, and, and I, I think there's some, some issue about understanding those. So I, I, I'm not quite sure how to accomplish that unless we have like a separate meeting. Yes. Yeah, so, Mr. Chair. So that was my point. So I think our policy review change has served us well in policies where there were just, shall I say, minor edits or things that needed to be tweaked. Uh, what we're suggesting here, I, I think, may call for uh, at least a temporary uh, revisit of the, the so. policy committee because otherwise it, this, that it's not appropriate to try to wordsmith the uh, so. sustainability so, policy. So Mr. Mr. Chairman, can I, can I ask for clarification yep. here? I'm reading the motion. The motion talks about several different policies here. Uh, well, they're crossed out here, which I guess you're saying they're not ready for. Come on. Get on the right page there, Phil. Oh. <laughs> right. Come on, I, I yeah. did my homework. Come on. <laughs> it's so right. So the only one that's actually on the agenda uh. is this one that I've been talking about. And, and I'd actually just like to, I mean, we're public power. I, I would personally like to hear from the public about what they want in their energy mix. And, right. um, you know, so. and, and that's, a, that's a philosophical thing. And I would think, I would love to have input and that at our next meeting we're hearing from the public about what they want. So, Mr. Chairman, in, yeah. in, the, in the fact that Mr. Hennessy is not here, yep. maybe we should just go on to the next item, item nine. That's fine. But so we'll, okay. yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. And That's what full, I'm saying. And have a fuller discussion with Mr. Hennessy also being here. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I hope okay. that was clear. Maybe no, it wasn't. I, again, I, I think Phil interrupted me, but uh, I would just suggest, uh, you know, that it become Groundhog Day if we can. Nothing's going to happen with this without a, some sign of a subcommittee or something. So maybe that's not needed now, but this kind of policy, the kind of well, the kind of suggestions you're making, yep. I agree with Dave. It's just there's no there's no mechanism for that to happen. All right, here's what I would suggest be a mechanism. At our October meeting, we have an agenda item where it's it's open for public discussion and for us to discuss and look at what possible language <laughs> could be. That's my suggestion. That we not have a committee that uh, that does it. We have we do it at our full board meeting. Uh, uh, for well, uh, for that to happen. Speaking from one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. For that to happen, me, someone has to do some background work. Right. To bring the agenda together. Me, uh, you, you can't. You can read something that's been presented, but we're yep. talking about creating something literally. So okay. I don't. I don't think it's sufficient, effective, and uh, and I, I okay. think uh, I think it really will take more time. I think you're looking at a for our board meeting, just discuss a policy. Just yeah. a um, well, okay. Could I make a suggestion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, perhaps we could have a a separate meeting. Yep. Um, with some select group uh, uh, of us, uh, and Colleen and anyone else who's you know appropriate. Yep. To get the definitions correct and get the intent right, and get it worded on. Perhaps one page, then 
we could certainly circulate that as yep. part of the agenda piece to all the board members and invite the public to discuss okay. as well. And, I agree. And that, this is the full board meeting, so why don't we schedule a full board meeting for a week before the October meeting to discuss what we want to do on this, and we can we can have that meeting well, be. I'm not sure it would take a full board meeting to do that. Okay. I think we could do it during the regular board meeting, if as long as we've got very good definitions and we've solicited uh, public opinion. Okay. Do you, do you think? Do you, That's do fine. You? I think we can also call a meeting. We don't have to. We don't have to decide and schedule a meeting right now. We can do this also. Uh, at the staff level, we can figure out okay. what the dates would be and then post it properly. So I, it, it's just a definitional point taken. thing. Yeah. Point taken. Yeah. Okay. I, so I, I, can I make one final comment? Yep. So last meeting, we spent an hour or 45 minutes talking about sort of line item changes to policies. Yep. <laughs> We're talking about rewriting. Someone has to rewrite the policy. So whether that's done by a committee or whatever you want to put a name to it, something trying to do it in a full board. I. Well, I just would say is uh, I'm happy to sit then in on it, but I think could it would we be very task. Yeah. Could we get comparable policies from other light plants that have been adopted by their boards of commissioners or that are enshrined in their plan? All right. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Okay. This particular policy is a sustainability policy, and the correction that was made was to not let the public think that sustainable meant renewable. So it was specifically defined in right. accordance with the law and so we are saying in here that we're meeting certain percentages that the board wanted us to meet on sustainable meaning that it's produced by renewable either we retire or we don't retire the recs or they might be part of the financial uh, uh, calculation that's done on solar where the vendor is collecting the rec okay so this is actually accurate what I'm hearing is you would rather have a policy where we say okay we would like to meet true renewable by a certain date. And we, we would like to meet sustainable by a certain date. Or we would like to have batteries and this other technology and we want to have that much in our portfolio. Possibly, and it's, yeah. And it, that's a very broad topic. And well, when, you, when you say you want to include public input, where we're looking into doing a, a customer survey you know, that's where you type, you get that type of data. We'd have time to ask the other organizations of which we just talked about Energy New England is trying to get together what does everyone else do? Yep. Because not everyone else has okay. a have, renewable some, or sustainable You're making policy. great points. So, so a couple of things. One key question that we should, we should solicit input on and then state in our policy is, are we in line with the state's goals of 80% renewable by 2050 or not? So is that something that the board and the department is is wanting to do and is feels is that what the board is directing the department to do yes or no and if the answer is no why are we not doing it are we saying we don't it's not it's going to be too costly or whatever so we've never said whether we want to be in line with state policy so that's one basic thing to establish you know do we is that our policy or not and then uh, secondly if we're going to make these definitions well you know, the, the, earlier this week you, you mentioned in a, an informational email that, that we actually have zero renewable energy, but that's not st stated anywhere in the policy. It's just using these words to kind of, with all due respect, to kind of avoid saying that. Um, I think it's, we need to be clear about what our mix is and how we define these things, and it's not clear right now. So you read this and the reader doesn't understand that, uh, okay, well, we we took these actions so we can't really take credit for what we're taking credit for but we're calling it sustainable to do that so it's like I said last meeting it feels a little murky to me and it could be clearer and I think it also could be clearer in our favor in terms of showing things that we do um, that are good and are, are unusual like batteries and, and generation that are very good for the system and good for sustainability and good for carbon emissions but this doesn't address those in any way shape or form so I think why adopt something that's incomplete and unclear on these things when we can take the time to adopt something that's clear and gets into these things? I, I, I agree. Yeah. It's just a completely different animal. That's all. No, not and, really. And it's it's well, one. That it's it's this animal, but that things are clearly explained and it's complete, and it states whether we're in line with state goals or not. I mean, it, this just kind of is. Well, if that, we're that, if, that's all. if we're going to look at state goals, which correct me if I'm wrong, Jane, have not even been established yet we're we're in the process of yep. 
because we're still locally controlled and we're not mandated by the state. We're not okay. mandated, but we're governed by elected representatives of the public, and the elected representatives, as charged by the public, can set a policy. So what is the policy? Correct. Oh, yeah. I, but I just think when we write a policy that way, in order to be transparent, right. okay, we can set up models of what it would look like, and we can also project out what that cost is going to be. Absolutely. Because that's going to be really, that's, that's going to take a little bit of time and not going to be able to do that in, in any uh, policy. Okay, or so maybe there needs to be a reporting requirement here that, that periodically RMLD shall report what it's, whatever, you know, emitting, not emitting, renewable, not renewable is, and that it's posted on the website. You can't find that on our website right now. So there's a lot to this. So that's why I'm saying, I just try, was just trying to table it, but now we're getting into some of these things that that's why I don't think this is ready for prime time because it's, I'm, I'm uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy just to table it until we can get better yeah. definition amongst ourselves in terms of what we need. Mm -hmm. And I think we decided we're going to have a meeting to, to get into some of these things, hopefully get some public input, and then maybe by October we can have a policy that we can adopt, or maybe it, it doesn't happen by October, and that's okay. I mean, let's do it when we're ready to do it. Yeah. yeah. We've got okay. till 2050. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is this, I don't remember. Is this uh, a new policy or... No, this is an existing policy, existing policy, and and the only thing that was clarified was the definition. What we didn't, um, we had talked at the last meeting as to whether or not you wanted me to change it into a renewable goal. Um, and my understanding was you just wanted the definition clarified for now because renewable goals, in aligning with the state, in aligning with everything that the RMLD is doing, out there. Uh, on this topic is going to take some time. Yeah, but um, it's, it's, I think it's worth doing. It's yes, very fundamental to, you know, major, okay. major yes. questions. So. Can we move on? Yes, yeah, please, let's on. do it. Yes. So we'll move on. All right, thank you. Now we're doing uh, uh, agenda item number nine, uh, Jane Parenteau's report. Thank you. Um, before we start with this, I, I just have a couple community relations event, if that's okay with the board. Mm -hmm. um, on uh, Sunday, September 16th, the RMLD held a uh, ride and drive event. Um, we estimated that we had about between 75 to 100 customers that participated. Um, we had over 35 test drives. Um, we had dealers uh, with, from Cornerstone Mitsubishi Wilmington, Honda Gallery in Reading, Smart of Linfield and Quirk Chevrolet of Braintree. Um, we also had um, showcase vehicles where actual customers came with their vehicles and they were able to talk to pers prospective EV purchasers about the benefits of EVs that they had. Uh, and for that, we had a Tesla Model, Model 3, a Tesla Model X, the Chrysler Pacifica, which is a, a plug-in hybrid, the Chevy Bolt, the Honda Clarity, and the Nissan Leaf. Um, so uh, we partnered with Wakefield and Danvers for this event and um, overall it was great success and uh, members of IRD and customer service uh, in my group did a really nice job for that. Um, additionally, um, there will be a tech talk on smart homes held at the Reading Public Library that the RMLD will per be uh, participating in and that's on September 27th at 7 p.m. Um, just a reminder that Public Power Week open house for RMLD will be here on October 11th, and the time frames will be from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, Wilmington is hoping, holding, holding an open house for new and existing residents on October 15th at 6 o'clock at the Wilmington Library. Um, and then we're beginning to distribute the elementary student art contest materials to the uh, fourth grade participants in, in our service territory. Um, this year, awards will be taking place in February rather than January, just to give the schools more time to do the artwork and for us to collect it and judge it. Um, and that the um, historical calendar is on the works and we're working on that as well. So that cool. concludes the uh, community relations update. Jane, a couple of questions. How many on the uh new electric vehicles that people can get the rebate how many how many are we up to now yes we've actually done 31 wow. uh, we've actually achieved the goal we set a goal of 31 mm -hmm. we were hoping it would be approximately six per month yeah. um, and it's about equal to with the battery electric and the plug-in hybrids 
Um, so I'll be happy to present uh, an update for that next month, okay. just to tell you the different models. And uh, we're actually starting to analyze the residential load on those to see what the increase is for the, for the off-peak charging. Yeah, the other question I had, I saw on the road the other day that there's actually an electric vehicle license plate. There is, yeah. You, what, you get, it's it's the, kind of like a vanity plate where you don't have to get it for an electric vehicle, but if you do have an electric vehicle, you can get that plate. Are the proceeds going any particular uh, place? I'm not, I'm not familiar with that, um, yeah. Bill, but I can also look at look into that to just get a little yeah, more information. Okay. Yeah. would hope they go back into renewable energy, I would hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So um, this is the September, per um, September um, board meeting for Purchase Power, and we'll be covering July, June and July. Um, so the first slide looks at our energy costs and our cost per kilowatt hour, and we look back three years from fiscal year 2016 to 2018. And as you can see, um, our, our energy costs went from 32.4 million in, 20, in fiscal year 16 down to 31.5 in fiscal year 17. And the estimate for this year's uh, year end closing is at 30.1 million. So gas prices are an all time low. Uh, we've done a good job procuring power. Um, in addition to that, sales are going down, which I'll, slow, I'll show you in, in, in some additional slides here. But the average cost has gone from a little over 4.5 uh, all the way down to 4.45. Um, so that, that's a direct pass through to our customers, and so they're, they're receiving those costs directly. The next slide looks at transmission costs. And as you can see, on average, transmission is going up about a little over 5% each year. In fiscal year 16, we were at 12.3 million. Uh, we had a 5.6 increase in fiscal year 17 to 13 million. And in fiscal year 18, and it was another 5.1 increase to 13.7 million. Uh, those costs are regional network service primarily over 90%. Uh, transmission is socialized throughout New England. And again, um, a lot of our programs that, are, that we design are, are designed to reduce our peak demand, which is how we get charged for this. So we're trying to correlate our retail programs with our wholesale power supply costs. The next slide looks at capacity costs for fiscal year 16. Uh, we were at 18.7 million. Uh, in fiscal year 17, we had a 6.9% increase, uh, just under 20 million. And this last fiscal year was the, the, the peak of capacity. Uh, that was the result of footprint power coming online. Uh, that's the, took place for the old Salem Harbor. Um, and those costs were at 25.4 or 27% increase. Um, those costs are seen on our customer's bill through the PPCT, which is Purchase Power Capacity and Transmission. Mm -hmm. So again, the RMLD makes no revenue on that. It's a complete pass through what our costs are. Um, we pass through and then our Shred the Peak program and our DG unit, um, as David mentioned earlier, is all programmed to try to minimize that capacity costs. The next few slides looks at our kilowatt hour sales by class. Um, and as we've spoken in the past, we have a declining, declining trend here. So the first slide is at residential kilowatt hour sales. Um, we had a little peak in 2015, um, but if you just do a, a trend line there, they're, they're, they're going down on average about 1% per year. Um, it's very similar in the industrial uh, kilowatt hour slide. It, that one's a little more consistent. Again, a little peak in 15, uh, but there's steady decreases in 16, 17, and 18. Um, the next slide looks at municipal buildings and public schools. Um, and again, the same type of uh, format here, um, trending downward. This is probably a little steeper than the other ones. I know a lot of the schools have been working on efficiency programs. Um, we've done the LED, LED lighting uh, upgrade, so that, that's increased to, uh, that's provided some decrease in sales because of efficiencies. And then the last slide looks at just the total kilowatt hour sales that the department is looking at. Um, and then the trend line is similar to the, to the per class slides. And that would complete my report if there's any questions. I'm curious what it, what it takes to determine what our peak reduction was on the 29th. Like what is involved with knowing what we achieved? It's data analytics in terms of um, we kind of look at different scenarios. Um, we had sent out a little um, report in July 
Um, and one of the, the caveats that we had in the July report is there's a lot of things that contribute to the peak. Right. Um, and it, a good example of that, um, it, the, the data had indicated that we had about a 5% reduction in overall peak if we just looked at the numbers right. uh, uh, from last year to this year. However, when you start diving into the data, one of the, one of the major components that stood out on that particular day was a, one of our largest customers was on shutdown this week, that oh, week. Lucky so for us. So again, yeah. that, if you just look at the data, right. we say, oh, our Shred the Peak's doing a great job. We've, you know, we've had a 5% decrease, but then when you start diving in and analyzing the data, you have to look at all aspects of it. So it's a little complicated. Um, it takes a little while, but we'll do our best in terms of trying to make that determination. Um, we have a list of the customers that are actually participating um, because we had 2,000 customers sign up for our Shred the Peak. So we'll look specifically at those to see if we can determine some trends um, and try to get you some information in the next couple of meetings. Thanks, Jane. Thank you. Jane, one quick thing. Is it, pos I mean, is, is it possible for like the CAB meetings um, to separate like the industrial kilowatts by town so we can, so that each member could see what their town is contributing and or how the sales have changed for those? Yep, yep. absolutely. We'd cool. be able to do that. Yep, no problem. That's a good idea. Good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> Hamid. Same You're up. Left, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to approve, right? <laughs> no, no, we still got more. Turn the page over. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm giving the report for the June, uh, end of June, basically, June of 2018. The first slide is giving you the expenditures, what we spent up to June. Uh, in uh, capital improvement projects. As you could see on the left the description, the far right shows the remaining balance. In some areas we saved money uh, really, uh, in some areas we didn't spend the money as we projected. Like uh, New Wilmington substation, you know, and those are the, that's the one that is still in negotiations with National Grid. Uh, so I was supposed to get the uh, PNS today. Hmm. But uh, yeah, as you know, they are uh, in strike, in strike the yeah. gas side. Yeah. So it's everything is being kind of pushed yeah. off a little bit. Uh, the LED, LED street lightings, you know, we saved like about $437,000 through competitive bidding and also the prices of the street lights, uh, you know, they, they came down as, you know, every year they continued coming down. The station three reactors, $245,000 that we saved and that's uh, through competitive bidding, uh, which was really great. The next slide is showing you the routine capital constructions uh, with the, all the categories, the pole settings, overhead underground projects, and pole damage, hazmat, uh, storm troubles, and new sub subdivisions, everything. So we spent, uh, in the month of June, 68523 That brings the total year to date to $1,360,000 and 360110 dollars uh, the next uh, slide shows the spendings for facilities, integrated resources, and information technology, which, uh, you know, we had a little bit balance. Uh, we, uh, we saved some money in some areas and facilities, you know, we uh, ended up spending a little bit more. Uh, the, that uh, basically for the capital expenditures for all divisions through the month of June, we spent $687,683. Uh, that would bring the uh, year to date to six million five hundred thirteen five sixty five. Uh, what was budgeted, you know, so we had actually the remaining balance of one million one hundred seventy one thousand nine hundred fifty six, which six hundred fifty thousand dollars of that was for the land, and you know, uh, three hundred two hundred forty five thousand, as I mentioned, we saved on the reactors and four hundred thirty seven thousand dollars for street lights that you know we saved on, on so those, those are savings from uh, purchases those are some, uh, some savings and some of that as you see you see that we run over it's not really running over these are the ones that you know the equipment they came in after the june mm -hmm. uh, from previous fiscal year ah, okay. and our policy is that you know unless if we have them and receive them in stock we don't pay them uh, the big ticket item for that was uh, six hundred fifty thousand dollars for generator 
because the contractor, you know, uh, they started late and they delivered the project, you know. Uh, I mean, they delivered the project uh, right around the right time, but the testing and final acceptance right. wasn't done until passed. So that's th what the explanation for that would be. Uh, any questions on those? Yes, sir. So um, uh, I don't know if you're at that stage, so we're transitioning to uh, calendar yes. fiscal year. Right. So does that mean as we go down to the end of the year, the reporting, we're not going to be having a July 1 to June 30th budgeting, right? No. no, no. So as are we going to have a six-month budget for the rest of this year, July to December? Actually, go ahead. So the budget was approved for FY19, so we're just going to um, compare the budget as we spend money yep. as it would have been. We're just going to compare per month what it would have been. Okay. Should you come up okay. to the microphone? Same way we always did. Yeah. But then, of course, at 1231, the FY19 budget stops. And we will be presenting a new budget um, in October and November for calendar year 19. Okay, so you still measure progress to budget, but in, d in January 1. It's a brand new budget. Yeah, which will incorporate, I guess, the CapEx? Yes. Or the? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No, Good. no, no just a shout out again, the engineering and the amount of work that, that you were doing and, and Colleen is doing is extraordinary. And Thank you. We know there's a yeah. tremendous amount that's being done to make the system better. This is the nuts and bolts of what keeps the lights on. And it's, I mean, it's again, it's hard to see it if you're the public, but it's, there's an incredible amount going on at RMLD. And, and we're all thankful to you and to you, Colleen, for that. Thank you. We've got a great I, I team. I think it is seen in terms of what we don't experience. We right. see other towns around us that have had some real tragedies lately. And yeah, yeah great ex place. exactly. And, and we've had projects that was nothing, and now there's a gas generator. There's a battery project. You have a very complicated substation project that you're, get, that you're figuring out, for, again, from scratch. And, I mean, these are, these are just, this isn't just keeping, kind of pushing things down the road. This is, like, fundamentally engineering the system in great new ways. And... So just thank you from all of us. You're welcome. Well, we've got a great team. I mean, it's a team effort. Yeah. They're all working well together. And our goal is to save money for the public, and we are proud of what we're doing. Yep. So yeah. thank you for great. that. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is the routine uh, maintenance, basically, in the transformer replacement program. We're making progress on those. You see the percentages for Padmont and the uh, overhead transformers. The pole inspections, we're doing great. Again, the contractors are in town for next round, for next 10 percent, to test the 750 poles again this time around. And I'm mm, glad to announce that, you know, the failure rate, it keeps going down. The first year, if you recall, we had like about 33 percent failed. And now we're down to like, you know, f 5 to 10 percent. That you know well. What, what I mean by fail, it does, that doesn't mean the pole is going to fall today. Because if we catch something that you know needs immediate that's condemned, we need immediate attention. It takes uh, it's, it's, it's taken care of right away. The failing meaning that you know, some standards that the testing standards that say that you know okay this is this pole is had it, so you better schedule to replace that. That's what I mean by by that. <coughs> so that's going very well. The inspection of the feeders, these are all the feeders that, you know, we're inspecting and we haven't found any problems on those. You see the list, uh, there's quite a lot. Uh, the manhole inspection program, that's going very well. We still, you know, keep inspecting them and making improvements in the, uh, uh, in the URDs, the underground rural developments, uh, the projects, and uh, also the existing uh, underground subdivisions that, you know, they need maintenance. Porcelain cutout replacements, we are making progress on those as we are making improvements throughout all these towns. They're being replaced. There are only a small percentage left that, you know, that should be taken care of as we're making all of these improvements in these areas. The tree trimming, going extremely well. Uh, the substation maintenance, that infrared scan that we do monthly, it's really paying off. I mean, it's ama amazing how much money we've saved and how much we could caught up, get caught, I mean, do the preventative maintenance as opposed to, you know, you know the failures that could uh, happen if you don't do this program. The underground subdivision upgrade, this is a great project. Uh, I mean, the crews, they're taking great pride in doing those, and we're trying to catch up with it. These are the old subdivisions that, you know, they need, to, everything needs to be uprooted. I mean, you can't just fix that and not uh, go to the next one over because it's just a matter of time before it fails. 
So as we get into, into these projects, right now, you know, doing it, you know, a n number of times going back and forth, which is very costly operations. We just take care of from A to Z and be done with it. And we have made quite progress on those. We got a few more uh, the subdivisions that, you know, we need the, the idea of working progress. And these are the ones that you see in, in all over the North Reading and Wilmington and Linfield. So you have the list, you see them on in progress. So we're making really good uh, headway on, on these. And, you know, we see uh, we're still not out of the woods yet because they're like about, you know, 60, 70 subdivisions. But what we've done, we've prioritized them based on the age and severity of the, you know, the uh, project, I mean, the, the maintenance that they need. So we, we have prioritized them and we are replacing them and taking care of those. <coughs> the poles, as you see, the ownership, you know, we got up approximately 16,000 uh, poles. The ownership is 50-50 with Verizon. The custodial, that shows that, you know, the only custodials for us, RMLD, is uh, half in Reading and uh, entire North Reading. The other areas is done by Verizon, which uh, actually they've been catching up with the maintenance, which I'm glad to see that, you know, they're setting up poles. And the response is much better than what it used to be, but not still at the rate that we'd like to. They can't keep up with us, uh, with all the poles that we are setting and, you know, do the transfers. But it's a, uh, we see some improvements. I hope that continues. It's too bad they can't subcontract that to you. Uh, yeah, all right, that's right. We Maybe. could be. <laughs> <laughs> we could, yeah, we Perfect get to screen. those. Why not? We <laughs> get to those. Uh, we've removed, uh, are you going to see that on the report over here? We our crews, they have taken care of a ton of poles, really. And these are all in the critical areas and the areas that they needed to be done or should have been done like, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago probably. Mm -hmm. But we catching up, you know, like what I said, it's working progress. We're still not out of the woods yet, but we are much in better shape today than we were, you know, four or five years ago. Yep. Uh, in Linfield, you see that RMLD has 19 transfers to do. In North Reading, uh, we have nine transfers and 44 pole boxes that need to be removed. In town of Reading, we got 27 transfers to do, 18 pole butts to remove. And in uh, Wilmington, we got 28 transfers and four pole butts that needs to be removed. So these num numbers, they keep going up, down, up, down, depending as we installing more poles and as we do the transfer. So obviously they go down and removing the pole butts. So I want to thank uh, our residents uh, in four our uh, for all four towns for being patient with us. We don't like those double poles, but please, pe please be patient as this is the important part of the reliability of our system. So that's why the reliability is getting better and better because we're spending money to upgrade the system and uh, obviously, you know, you see the results. The next slide, I, can, I think, is showing how well we are doing in uh, reliability. It shows the reliability indices for SADI, KD, and SAFI. They're all well below uh, regional and national reported averages. So these numbers are improving, getting better, and, you know, that's what we like to see. That means, you know, reliability-wise, we are strong. However, we still need to keep up with the maintenance for these numbers to get better and better. Uh, is, and so the next page, it shows the causes of outages uh, as of June 2018. And you could see that across all categories compared to five years average, uh, they are making progress. That means they're going down. Although lately we've had few uh, three incidents that, you know, uh, it's just the nature of the game. I mean, there's some trees with shallow roots that, you know, they're healthy, they're next to the line or across the street. And if something blow, uh, I mean, the wind blows, and could bring them down. And, you know, uh, that we had don't have any controls over. And, but we get to them as uh, with the tree trimming program, they're being identified and we're watching them. And if they're approaching the lines, we trim them. Uh, as we mentioned and as the policy uh, mentions, like eight inch cut that we do so they don't approach the lines. But that program is going very well too. So so that concludes my meeting for tonight, my report for tonight. Are, are you going to comment on the um, TV program of the squirrels or the? Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, uh, as you, you've noticed, I mean, number of outages that they've had, they, they've been related to the squirrel. We got a squirrel guard, you know, and not probably in the entire system, but oh, I would say majority of the transformers, they got them. It's hard to catch up on those. However, you know, the squirrels are getting smarter these days. <laughs> So they know. <laughs> Darwinian, huh? They, they, they know how to get in and you know how to make, work their way, their way in to making the fault. I mean, uh, we are not the only one. Uh, I mean, actually, we're doing better than other communities, but uh, in Eversource, they've had lots of squirrel con contacts. Uh, the other communities, they have them too. I wouldn't really take it against the utilities for animal, you know, contacts like that. I mean, it's quite common. They have them all over. This is one of the biggest and highest uh, uh, causes of failures in most utilities. And you know, well, you, there's only so much you could do. You could put animal guards on them, and you know, but it still doesn't guarantee that you know they're not going to make the contact. Well, plus, uh, I think the population's or, up. Yeah, that's right. The population is up. Right. Oh. Oh, yeah. Also, we got wow. lots of problems with the snakes and and you know rats that they get into underground switch gears and through the conduits. It's wet. Whenever it's raining a lot, it attracts them. It's warmer inside. You know, they just uh, seems that's their sanctuary. So they get in there, they make a contact, and all of a sudden, you know, it uh, right, the right. switch yeah. blows up. They <laughs> don't realize that you know it cost us probably sixty thousand dollars for that switch. Uh, Apparently, the acorn uh, uh, amounts were significant last year, which yeah. led to uh, oh, is that right? In really, the, uh, increase in uh, wow. survival and birth right. rates. Yeah. <laughs> but I uh, mean, to your, to the point, uh, the, the slide on outages causes that's really one month year to date. It's just one month of this is for the month. Uh, the the stuff that you see in red, uh, you know, this is for the month of, uh, you know, for the entire year. I'm sorry. The entire year. Okay. That's right. So that's, that's for the entire year so of 2018. Right. Yeah. Okay. Year, year, year to date. Yeah. Since from uh, January all the way to June, they did the report. So this is how it shows, it's you know. Yeah, yeah, and then you see the five-year average, you know, uh, for all of those categories. Th these are the stuff that we, we report back to APPA. Uh, as a part of the e-reliability track you know, the software, and then they put it on the yep. database and they compare us against others, how well we're doing, mm -hmm. and we've got a quite uh, impressive uh, system yeah. to compare us against other communities. Mm, uh, I have one, one, one question for you. Can you address the readiness the department would have should we have an incident like took place in the Merrimack Valley? Mm -hmm. With, the, with all those, with the, the gas explosions, and our readiness should something like that happen here. Well, they shut down the electricity. We shut down the electricity. Well, and it's the nothing like that we could control, because we don't control that's the gas. That's lines. right. Well, we are as ready as uh, other, uh, any other communities. I mean, we are a little bit ahead of them, because we got, you know, uh, uh, emergency management plan, which means that, you know, we got crews, they respond, we got mutual aid at our, you know, uh, that they're gonna help us should something happen. We also have contractors uh, on, uh, on site that, you know, they, they are assisting us right now with all those constructions that they're going. So we are prepared to respond to any kind of emergencies if it, it happens. And during a time like that, you know, if you get lots of help from other communities, mm -hmm. but, uh, for ours, you know, we are, it's, it's manageable. So we have plenty resources available that they could support us if we need to. Okay, wanna move on to our procurement or is there anything more? Oh, I'm good. Thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Is this also you, Hamid, or? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I got the motion? Uh, motion first. Please. Move that bid 2019-1 <coughs> for 115 KV <coughs> pole replacement project be awarded to Mass <coughs> Bay Electrical Corp Corporation for $120,585 pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30, Section 39M, as the lowest responsible and eligible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager. Second. Yeah. No, I mean, do you, wanna you want to explain what it is? Okay. Yeah. As you know, we got two 115 KV lines. Uh, those are 211.503, 211.504 that they feed Station 4. That's a, our bulk electric supply station. So if you recall, we tested the poles and some of the poles on both lines. They show that, you know, they have reached the end of their life. And actually, they should have been a long time ago. But 
you know, we catch them, so we uh, schedule them to, uh, to be repaired and maintained. Last year, we took care of one line, 211503, and now that one is excellent. It's in good shape. This year, we're going to take it to the other line, the 504 line, which is, you know, uh, we have to replace poles. We have to replace the, uh, the, stru the entire structure and, you know, upgrade them so they're in good shape. Uh, they're not going to fail, but, you know, these are the preventative maintenance that we do to guarantee, and uh, not guarantee, but that, that we at least do what we can and what we know the best to keep them in good working conditions because, you know, unless if the f plane falls or anything else that, you know, it's beyond our control, they should be good, in good shape. Uh, so the bid was sent to 17 bidders, and uh, out of those 17, uh, five that they responded. The lowest uh, responsible, responsive bidder uh, was uh, Mass Bay Electric, uh, Electrical Corporation for 120,585. Those are very reputable contractors, and they do a good job on 115 KV lines. Mm -hmm. Ready for a vote? Yeah. All in favor? Mm -hmm. This motion. Okay. As is 4 0. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Can I make a comment, Dave? Just to add to that, the RMLD doesn't ha is not equipped with the bucket reach or anything like that to work on 115 KV lines. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would be one of our specialties. But we just, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be cost, uh, you know, to, to have that type of equipment. Right. And if I could add one more thing back on the reliability. Uh, so we just, um, through NEPA, we we hired a company called Workplace Safety and we self-audited because you know how much I love self-auditing. Mm -hmm. I always want to know where we are. Uh, so we did a self-audit on OSHA because as, as I've said before, February 2019, we have to be OSHA compliant, all municipals across the board. So they did a very comprehensive uh, audit for two days, this, uh, the beginning of the week. Um, and it's, you know, it's the system, our trucks, uh, you know, they look at policies, procedures, housekeeping, A to Z. Um, it's going to take a little bit to come out with the report. I've asked them to be extremely thorough, uh, but we did well. So um, just so you know, we, you know we, we're heading towards that. Uh, the Department of Labor um, and Statistics will be, you know, handling this in the future, but we're in good shape as I thought we would be. So we got some things that we need to improve, and that will be in the report, and we'll do that when it comes out. We'll make a presentation. but. That'll probably be in a, in a couple meetings from now. Great. Great. Good. Thank, Thank you. Good. Thank yeah. you for that. Very good. Um, I think we're getting to the end. Yep. Um, yep. Any more discussion from anybody? No. no. Um, do we want to try to schedule a meeting about uh, the policy 30 before the 18th of October or? Sure. Okay. No, I would only uh, suggest that in terms of urgent versus important yep. uh, and strategic, I think getting the town payment, to, if, if there's going to be a conflict in our, in right. our inability to get too You know what, down. you're right. Uh, I completely agree with you. And, and we don't have to rush through this other policy. We have time to like think it through. I don't think it's holding anything up or anybody's waiting for it, right? So. Well, can I make a comment about Please. the meeting? Um, so something happened awesome last night at the CAB meeting. And Dennis didn't mention it, so I will. Um, <laughs> I was going to mention it because I just looked at the dates. Oh, you were? <laughs> oh, okay. I don't want to steal your thunder. Go no, ahead. go ahead. See if it's the same thing I was going to say. Okay. It's going to happen on the same night? Yeah. Budget? So every year for five years, I've said, why can't we just do the budget? It's one story, one night. So um, the cab's going to do it in one night. So I'm going to ask you guys to do it in one night, too, and you only have one meeting scheduled for October and 18th. So, and the reason why it's okay to do it in one night is because you know it used to be that you just were looking at that year and that was it. But now you have a six-year budget. You know everything that's coming. Right. You know I, we go over every single dime that we're spending. You know, and it's so the picture is there. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's it's not really a two-session right. budget. But uh, that's for you to decide. But I, no I, I didn't uh, strong arm George, that. but totally they are going to do it on October 9th. The only reason we did it was two nights is because that's what we always did. <laughs> you could try it. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but, but that moved our meeting from the 17th to the 9th. 
So our 17th meeting, I don't think we're doing because George and I were away, right, which so makes this yeah. budget meeting now the 9th. So it looks like, um, John, you were supposed to sit in on the 17th. The 17th, right. But um, it's got now on the 9th, and we're going to do the whole budget that So night. it's October 9th? Yep. Yeah. You okay with that date? I'm just checking here now. Uh, it's a great idea. Whose idea was it? The do it? Colleen's. Yeah. <laughs> I actually asked for that instead of a raise. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, but then we can re can we still rescind that vote? Yeah, October, <laughs> October, October, October 9th, fine. Yep. Okay. You are feeling sick, Colin. <laughs> Let me know if you got a, if something comes up. You got a problem? Yeah, okay. no, I'll be coming back from California that night, so I should. Yeah, be okay. okay. If you got a problem, let me know. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we do we need to schedule that uh, payment subcommittee meeting, or we we'll do that but offline? She's got to she's got to coordinate with everybody. Got to, schedule. Of course, of course, yes. Yeah. Um, when that schedule. So okay. that, otherwise, we're good. And then in terms of the uh, cab meetings, do we had, actually, if I could switch with somebody, because the one in November happens to be on my birthday, so much as oh, I would love to uh, spend it with you, Dennis. Oh, better on. to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal, Dennis. About <laughs> Switch the 14th sure. of November? Yeah, yeah, if I could. Uh, I mean, can you take the 19th of December? Uh, sure. I'll send out an email. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I'm happy to switch if you want to do that. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You can do your Christmas shopping. I can. Thank you. Appreciate that. Be done. Are we doing any second session tonight? Uh, well, do we still? We still do. Yeah, we still have, an, we have another executive uh, session, or? I only put it on there in case we needed it. Do we, so. Kelly? Right, so. The determination uniqueness, let me explain for you what, uh, why we need it and what happened to that. We put it on schedule because we were supposed to get the PNS last week, actually. Mm -hmm. So we know exactly how much the offer is. Nothing guaranteed that you're really, not going to go by what they're offering. Probably it's going to be negotiating going back so and forth. So should we wait and not talk about but this now? I would say if you wait on it, yeah, that, that would be the best thing to we do. We don't need to go into anything. We don't need to go for okay. now. So yeah. uh, the next time uh, in October, we're going to do that. Obviously, 30 days after you guys vote and approve that, uh, it, it, we're going to have to okay. uh, wait 30 days. Actually, put it on the central register and wait 30 days after before we okay. uh, execute any uh, bonding agreement. Okay. Mm. And, uh, you know, contract, so. and just as a quick capstone on that long discussion that I initiated on the policy 30, I, I guess the bottom line for me is I think it should, the board should be doing more thinking about it than we've done. So I really want to make, it's more on us, it's on me, than tweaking something that came up. So I think, I just want to take ownership of it and not, it's nothing wrong with what okay. how the tweak was done. But we would like the board to think more about it. Nice. So, um, Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All, right. all in favor? All right. And that's it. Okay. No, we pulled the board. Okay. We're not going to the second session. So. Okay. okay. Then right. I guess Thank we're you. done. We're done. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.